Hi, I'm April Lisa with Aviva Media, and today I'm talking with Dr. Claude Swanson about his new book in the Synchronized Universe series. His new book, Life Force, The Scientific Basis, is a compendium of amazing science and spirituality that is showing that we are moving into a new paradigm of thought about healing. So I want to thank you so much, Claude, for being here. because I pleasure. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, I know you're really busy, especially doing some um, research in the area, as well as presenting at a conference that was just here. Yeah, I have a, I have a new book, uh, Life Force, The Scientific Basis, that just came out. Yes. And uh, I've been speaking here in Colorado at several different organizations about... Um, there are various organizations, as you know, that study subtle energy and the mm -hmm. life force and uh, uh, energy healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what this is really all about. Mm -hmm. So having fun talking to people and explaining. I think I have some insights into how it works, so that's really what the book maybe helps people understand a little bit better. I think people that have been working with subtle energy and healing and um, in a lot of modalities are just so grateful that you've come forward with all the information that's in this book mm -hmm. because it really draws the connection between spirituality and science. Yeah. Well, I was at a conference a couple of days ago over the weekend called the Society for Scientific Exploration and they're you know, they they know that clairvoyants can see auras, mm -hmm. but they don't know what an aura is. And in terms mm -hmm. of science, we don't mm -hmm. really know what an aura is. And so one of the things the book describes is the sort of the physics of the aura, what it really is in terms of how it mm -hmm. connects to the DNA and the other processes in the body. So mm -hmm. a lot of things like that will help the two fields, science and spirituality, to come together, I think. So. Do you think there's been a resurgence or, or a change in the dialogue between science and spirituality? And I think I think it's growing rapidly right mm -hmm. now. That's my sense. Um, mm -hmm. For one reason, because a lot of people are becoming dissatisfied with the American medical system as it is. Mm -hmm. There's a very limited uh, abilities to handle things like allergies and cancer and things like that, mm -hmm. while oriental medicine, which is much more based on uh, spiritual energy, subtle energy, uh, the life force energy, uh, is more effective in some of those areas. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are starting to say, well, hey, what, what are we missing by just looking at one modality? Let's look at energy medicine. And, and, uh, and, and also, there are very powerful energy healers that are becoming available uh, mm -hmm. from China, mm -hmm. who are working with scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the data which they have amassed in experiments uh, just blows away scientists. Uh, there is one energy healer, uh, Jixing Li, that I worked with, a, a Qigong master, mm -hmm. who uh, sends uh, his energy from California, where he lives, to uh, Penn State, uh, 2,000 plus miles away, He's able to kill cancer cells in petri dishes, and uh, while dishes right next to them, a few inches away, that he's told not to touch, mm -hmm. they're unharmed. So mm -hmm. he's able to direct the energy very precisely with mm -hmm. very targeted results. Mm -hmm. um, there's another Qigong master who is able to affect physical processes like uh, mm -hmm. radioactive decay rates, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the behavior and the surface tension and the bonding properties of water, things like that. So um, what we're finding is that people who are expert at handling this energy uh, can really impact physics in very direct and measurable ways. Mm -hmm. That makes it important for scientists to study this because this is something we're supposed to understand. Mm -hmm. And if we can't explain it, then we better get to work. It's also been that there's been an evolution in scientific um, tools. So now you have tools to also measure these things. So it's kind of grown together in terms, do you think so? I do, I do. Yeah. Um, some of the tools, uh, Raman spectra sounds like a complicated <laughs> word, but it's a way of using lasers to look at the bonds in water mm -hmm. molecules. And it's a, it's a wonderful way, and typically it's, it's very sensitive. So when energy healers send their energy at water, uh, the bonds tend to change, and they show up very clearly in this type of measurement. So we have tools like that that, that really demonstrate energy healing is real. It has effects you can measure, and since we're mostly water anyway, it makes sense that energy healing is able to have an effect on us.
Exactly. And one of the, you said complicated. Mm -hmm. the, the machine sounds complicated and physics sounds complicated to most people. But one of the beautiful things about your book is it's easy for anyone to read who's Thank interested you. in Thank this. It makes it very accessible to anyone. So it's a great joy to be able to feel let into these, some of these secrets that have felt kind of unattainable or, or mysterious in the past. Well, thank you. Um, you the, the book itself, you know, is, is about this thick, you know. Yes, uh, yeah, I, you have I do, actually. But, <laughs> the book is exactly <laughs> that thick. <laughs> yeah. it, it's a big book, and um, I, I started out seven years ago thinking it was going to be easy mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. this, and thinking I understood it. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found is there have been a lot of breakthroughs in the past ten years, understanding a lot of different aspects of energy medicine. Mm -hmm. um, which to me is part of miracles, is part of how our consciousness affects the world around us and creates miracles. Mm -hmm. um, I found out, for example, that, that the acupuncture system mm -hmm. in the body, which um, has more than 700 points all over the skin throughout the body and is uh, central to Oriental medicine, Chinese medicine, um, but has been pretty much a mystery in the West until recently. In fact, uh, most scientists kind of thought it's more like a mythology than a real, a real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now the Koreans have been able to photograph the acupuncture uh, uh, channels. They're like little tubules mm -hmm. that are a tenth of a millimeter, you know, very tiny. Uh, they find them all through the body and they really do carry this special energy, the chi energy, the life force energy through the body as well as um, special cells that are like stem cells. They can, when they arrive at the point of injury, they can turn into the kind of cell that's needed to heal the organ at that location. Wow. And they're really important for healing. Mm -hmm. So that's why acupuncturists, when they are wiggling their little needles, you know, to help uh, correct the flow of what mm -hmm. they call chi in the body, it has real um, you know, dramatic effects on healing. Mm -hmm. Well, the Chinese government particularly has been uh, good the last 15 years or so in, in studying and publishing reports about the Qigong masters. Uh, one of the most uh, powerful and famous is named uh, Dr. Yan Jin, who um, grew up in China. As At a young age, he was discovered mm -hmm. as being very powerful and received training from a number of the most powerful Qigong masters in China. Um, he, was, he went to medical school, so he has a conventional Western medical education as well as a Qigong education. Uh, he, he was noted for, he took a huge load of courses when he was in school. When he was teaching, people noted that his students just learned so much and, and did so much better than anyone else. He, um, he became famous, he could just um, uh, diagnose people just like that by looking at them. Uh, cure people of, of things very, very quickly. Within a couple of days, he would cure diabetes and things like that. Um, and um, in, I guess in his 20s, a physicist, uh, one of the top physicists at their um, uh, research institution, sort of like um, our national lab at Sandia or Livermore, um, began working with him to find out from a physics point of view, what can he do? What can we verify? and did a whole series of tests, uh, not just close up, but at long distances as well. As well. And um, th they really, they became part of a book uh, edited by the physicist whose last name was Lou, whose family name was Lou. Um, things like you know, changing the decay rate of americium, which is a radioactive material, um, and he could uh, either increase the speed or decrease the speed of decay. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you know, changing the characteristics of water, the bonding properties of water, the, the Raman spectrum of water, uh, bending laser beams, um, creating heat from his hand that you could measure very easily. And um, his work became recognized by one of the top uh, Chinese scientists as basically proof that we are in the middle of a paradigm shift and a scientific revolution. That this energy shows for all scientists that uh, we can't explain this with the current scientific theories. We have to update them 
to include the energy of consciousness, the energy of the mind, um, and the energy of chi, um, and that's crucial for healing. Mm-hmm. It's crucial for understanding miracles. It it shows us that the mind is much more powerful than we ever imagined in the old paradigm system. Mm-hmm. And uh, if we want, want to understand miracles or healing, we need to be able to include these energies. So how, when you're talking about his Western and his Asian training, mm-hmm. how does he attain control over this energy? Or how does he amass this kind of healing energy, which is obviously informing his Western medical scientific mm-hmm. training? So uh, any insights on that? Um, I have not taken Qigong training myself. Um, so I, everything is sort of second or third hand. Mm-hmm. But one of the first steps is to learn to feel the energy in the body. And even people taking chi, Tai Chi exercises start to learn to feel how the energy feels moving in the body. A Qigong master learns to recognize the, the, the yang energy and the yin energy and be able to treat them separately and to be able to move them separately. Uh, typically, a Qigong master will um, build up whichever energy he needs or some combination of the two, uh, pool it maybe in the uh, Dantian point or some other place in the body, build up a concentration of it, mm-hmm. then move it through his acupuncture system and out one of his acupuncture points. Uh, the, mm-hmm. There's one in the middle of the hand called the Lao Gung, which is very often used. Uh, top of the head, there are also points there mm-hmm. that are used. Uh, and these are exit points for the energy, so they'll project it. Mm-hmm. Um, in in America, even uh, Reiki is something people are familiar with, and these are some people who are received training are used to seeing this happen over a foot or two, mm-hmm. kind of close distance, and you can often feel the heat from a Reiki uh, mm-hmm. practitioner when they're working on you, but. Um, with the Qigong masters, uh, they can send energy over thousands of miles, and uh, they can send energy in a form where it'll actually cause physical effects that you will feel, and um, you can cause you know a phenomena. Uh, one of the one area of Qigong that I find really interesting is called empty force, mm-hmm. um, which has been controversial in America because. Um, in our old paradigm, we thought, well, you can't really you know, project a force over a distance unless there's some material object that's being exchanged. But uh, I've met a number of Empty Force masters. There's a, a very good book called Empty Force by Paul Dong, who's a Chinese-American who's uh, studied it a lot. Typically what happens is when an Empty Force master shows up in a community of martial artists, um, those who are smart know that it's real. Those who are not so smart typically